Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro Slideshow Episode 2. Another episode of showing pretty much uh, a portfolio of my past work. Uh, most of these are quite recent. Check out that. From that ashy light to that perfect light. Now look at this one. Definitely visibility is probably about at 80% of what it's supposed to be. All that white gunky stuff there on uh, just soaks up the light. Now there you go. One of my models is how good you can see inside is how good the lights can see out. So as you see now, you've increased about 80% of your uh, light expenditure also uh, looking super good quite a bit this is just part two like I said uh, in the first video that there is so much content I have to break it up because uh, it's too long uh, you know look at this one here Wow so I'll be bringing uh, a couple more of these to you guys so you can just see the power of this method. Um, you know, like I said, there's a million different methods out there. Um, you know, I do have some guys that, that slide into the DMs of, uh, you know, my channel. And they have about experience as much as a regular person who's, you know, put some wax on a car. And they think they're detailers or they think they're headlight restoration specialists or something like that. And they're like, you skipped from from 800 to 3,000, uh, you know, I use this and that because it's that's wrong. I use, uh, you know, a 900, a 1,000, a 1,200, a 1,300, a 14, 1,500, 1,900. It's like you're just wasting your time extremely. That's pretty much like saying... Um, <coughs> I'm going to cut a football lawn, right, a 100-yard lawn, whatever it is, 100 yards by whatever the measurements are. I'm going to cut this, and I'm going to start with scissors. And then I'm going to start, and then after that, I'm going to go to a um, push lawnmower. And then after that, I'm going to go uh, to, let me see, a uh, you know bigger push lawnmower, then a weed eater, and then I'm going to go to a very small sit-down mower. Motor, and you know then I'm gonna go to a very large football motor and then I'm gonna have a couple people join me and help me cut it just you're a waste of time why don't you just start out with you know a couple people helping you in different lawnmowers uh, you know giant lawnmowers and go at it okay it's gonna be the same result if not better um, in my opinion better uh, too much friction and too much fessing with the light tends to mess with quality on top of that you're just wasting your time you know point A to point B you're just putting you know you're putting all these other things in between point A and point B that make absolutely no sense in terms of restoration uh, you know you know for in terms of you know uh, expenditure as far as how much energy you're putting into it, how much money you're putting into it, how much time you're putting into it to get less of a result. Uh, doing all these other steps actually can give you less of a result. You're going to, um, you know, start, um, you know, putting in uh, different um, issues, uh, whether it be you're over, you're, you're giving the areas too much friction, you're, you know, you're Perfect. just doing all kind of weird things, you know, it just, it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't need to be that way. It's pointless. From between 800, between 800 and 3000 uh, Trizac pad, there's no, I mean, if you really wanted to, you know, it's it's kind of like uh, training wheels. If you really need to go in between there, um, go ahead. But by using just what I'm using, there's no need. I mean, look at my headlights. Is it possible for you to be more clear? Is it possible for you to have a better end result? And here's the thing. This is just visual. When I say possible, I mean actual in the long run. You know, actual in the long run, when you are, you know, sealing these headlights, when you are, um, you know, coming to redo these headlights, when, you know, when, you know, all these other things that you put onto them and, uh, oh, I use 2K clear and I've never had a problem because you've done two lights in your life and you did that 2K clear light a year and a half ago. When it comes time to take that off, 
you're going to be like, damn it, that headlight pro guy said something about this. And you're going to eat up, you know, your headlight. Your headlight's going to start cracking and having permanent damage underneath it and, you know, all that. And I just want to throw that one in there, too. I do other stuff as well. Um, this is a uh, engine bay cleaning and detailing I just did. Um, yeah, I do a bunch of other stuff too. I do scratch removal. I do, uh, you know, polish, puff and wax, clay bar, uh, treatment. I do wash. I do, um, I do a bunch of stuff. I do water spot removal. I do, um, you know, scratch removal. I think I already said that. I do uh, water spot move on glass, not only paint, but on glass. I do black trim restoration. I do all kind of things. I'm not a one trick pony. And, um, you know, I use all of my knowledge to, uh, you know, help myself in different areas and i'm pre um, pretty good at everything else you know i excel at this this is my passion this is my number one thing this is the most number one needed thing in the restoration or car restoration or detailing uh service or just car service not in my opinion it's the number one needed and number one um just thing that is not really out there like you know people aren't thinking about their headlights and um, there's not many people out there that are doing headlights and that can do headlights at this level uh, it's very slim pickings um, but uh, I do a lot of other things do a lot of things the pro in the headlight restoration pro I mean I'm professional at a lot of other things this is uh, just one of my passions here this is what um, you know one of the things that spawned everything um, look at this highlight right here boom yeah Mazda headlights are very attractive they have different hues and tints and whatever and different um, you know designs inside of them this is a Mazda I think a Mazda 3 um, yeah they're very beautiful headlights um, but anyway uh, yeah, you know, there's a million ways to do stuff, you know, like you can you can hitchhike and walk and skip all the way to the next city over or you can get into a car and drive, you know, you, you can get into a plane and, and fly fucking, uh, excuse me, don't want to curse that much, but um, you can fly, uh, you know, to the south side of your city. You know, you can go up and come down, but that is not the proper way to do it. I mean, the proper way to do it would just be to drive. Um, you know, you just got to find what's right to do. And, um, I, you know, everybody has a different skill level set. Um, you know, and, you know, I'm just letting you know that everything you have tried before, nine times out of ten I have tried. This is how I got to this level. So what I'm trying to do is help you guys cut through the white tape and cut through, you know, the yellow tape and all that, you know, jazz of how do I do this and do I do it this way and, and tell you the proper way that I do it and I don't do it just for, um, you know, fun. I do it for bread and meat. Um, you know, if I don't do it and I don't get it right, I don't eat. Um, but anyways, this is an older um, Accord here. Look at that, like a early 2000s Accord came out nice beautiful um what is this is this the other side i think this is the other side of that accord if i'm not mistaken and uh boom look at that. beautiful it's never looked this good in a day in his life and um another a lot of guys are really concerned about um the clarity i mean not the clarity but um let me let me show you this this is what I call yellow cake dust. This is what you want to remove. That's what you want to remove from the uh, top of the headlight or the surface of the headlight. One of the ways that you know that you've gone deep enough is when this yellow cake dust with yellow tint starts turning white. That's one of the ways you would know to stop going in. And this is one of the things that you cannot see when you're wet sanding. You cannot, difference, you cannot differentiate the coloring of that dust when you are wet sanding. That is another plus for dry sanding, another negative for uh, wet sanding. But anyways, um, where was I? Um, these guys are worried about the ceiling and this and that. Now look, you can put something on these headlights that will stay sealed <laughs> and um, uh, this, this will stay sealed, you know, as long as you need it to be sealed. And you can stick something 
on a headlight um, that will seal longer than it needs to be sealed, but the light will go bad underneath it because it does not have the same amount of um, UV protection in it. Uh, one of the main indicators of this is when you spray something on the headlight and there is no kind of sheen, no kind of reflection. It's clear, but you see that reflection on there? That's because it's chopped full of UV protectant. And when you have no kind of sheen and you're not seeing uh, the, the, at some angles a rainbow tint, that means there's not enough UV repellent in it. You're not getting that certain shine. The shine is just not the clearness of it. It's also the uh, UV repellent inside of the product. Um, and people are like, I could put this on there and, you know, I want to have a problem for, you know, two years and three years and this and that. Same with this. You just have to have, you have to educate your customers. You got to um, know how to apply. You got to know what you're doing to make it last. Uh, like I said, on my vehicle, um, you know, it's last three years and look brand new. It all depends on how the person takes care of their vehicle. When uh, Meguiar's or whatever says, you know, uh, you know, about one year of protection or a year and a half of protection or whatever the hell it says, right? They're saying that as a disclaimer of pretty much how long you should have it looking like this. Okay, so for it to um, go bad, it doesn't just automatically go bad or fly off when that 12 or 13 month hits. It does not go back to this. Okay, you might have a little uh, piece of it here or in the corner there or something like that that might be um, a little less crystal clear as this. Maybe it might be a little crystal yellowish tint. Um, if you really, really are anal, you really, really pay attention to it, you, you'll you see. You might be like, there's a little bit of a, you know, here at the top. But the whole light is not going to look like this for a long time. I just did a return customer's headlight uh, and it looked um, less less than this this is that was a really bad one uh, you could see by the striations that was a um, uh, the person went through the car wash a lot okay which is bad for your headlights um, bad for your pain bad for your headlights you know if you're going through the mechanical car wash uh, touch this is better and washing it by hand is always going to be better but we don't have the time for that day to day uh, practice so anyways um, you're not gonna it's not gonna go all the way bad you know what i'm saying it's gonna be like a little piece look a little piece there if you want that showroom shine yeah you're gonna be calling me more often and you're gonna be calling me like every two years or something like that uh this guy like i was saying um one of my first ever return customers for headlights that i've done i actually had recently um and his headlights were done uh he was telling me this and that i got them done from you this and that and i you know i looked it up and i was like hey man that was uh two and a half years ago <laughs> literally two and a half years ago to the day um and uh he's like oh yeah you know i need you to come out and do it again so i came out and did him again checked it out but this guy check this out this guy drove um like 165 miles to work and from work and he um, drives on old dirt roads and he, you know, works at some kind of um, rock place, a rock industry place. So he drives in on these dirt roads and, you know, and uh, it looked a lot less than something like that, of course. Um, but he had a really nice um, Accord, special model Accord, and he just wanted his stuff to look right. He didn't necessarily need it done. It, you know, it was nothing like any of these before pictures on here. Nothing even close. Like, let's check out this next one. It was, um, this is a beautiful light right here. That's a Mazda as well. But uh, nothing like this. Nothing like this. It just doesn't automatically, oh, 12 months. It's, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16 months. Boom. Oh, it's like this again. No, it's nothing like this. It was just a little piece there, a little part on the top. And, you know, you might not have the super clean luster like this, um, but they're still going to look good. Uh, but the problem with those other other um, sealers and some sealers is that um, especially if they're not made for headlights and people are like you know I swear by 2k clear because you've never had to remove it because you have not done enough headlights because you don't know exactly what you're talking about okay I've done so many of them with it I've tried to use it myself I've practiced with it and I've done it 
it really destroys headlights okay it destroys them it messes them up and then when you get to a point in certain headlights like the, this it would be easier to take it off of this because it's all rounded everywhere but then there's certain headlights that have these dips and turns and fins and stuff on them it's damn near impossible to take this stuff off if you read the the back of the cans it says super scratch resistant that's not a good thing to have on a headlight because you can't remove it. Removing it pretty much consists of scratching. That's what sanding is. Unless you're going to chemically take it off, but the chemical can warp the plastic in the headlight as well. But here goes the uh, bonding. The main thing about the uh, 2K Clear is it bonds too hard. Okay, and it starts warping and damaging the light underneath the headlight eventually especially when you mix in heat and cold and all that stuff um also it um it goes bad okay so the uv repellent goes bad but it stays on okay it stays on right you know then it goes bad and then the light underneath it starts going bad and then it starts overheating and starts producing something they call spider cracking and cracking of the headlight. And then when you're trying to take it off, you have to apply so much uh, friction and go over and over and use heavier pads and, you know, and use more and more time. Then more spider cracks develop and more um, heavy permanent damages develop from just trying to remove it. Okay. And then at some points and sometimes in some brands and some levels of 2K Clear, you can't even um, really get off, so you end up having to leave it there or telling the customer. I've had about two customers so far that had um, the real extreme 2K clear, and I told them it can't come off, you know, and I'm not going to risk, uh, you know, uh, grinding, you know, when you have to grind all those edges and stuff and it won't come off and grind all those edges, you are putting yourself and your customer's vehicle or your vehicle, whoever's vehicle, at risk at risk of damaging it even through all that tape there even though i triple and dipple and do you know triple and quadruple tape around the edges sometimes uh you know over and grinding and grinding and grinding you to make some you know at the edges and have to do so much towards the edges um you know make your you know chances of damaging the light much much higher so uh, it's just not a good idea um this one is made for headlights there's other ones that are made for headlights that i've used in the past um like i said anything the sprays for some reason are more scarce than the wipes anything that's going to be a spray applicator is way more efficient than a wipe um i'm hoping 3m someday will come out with a spray because uh their clear coat wipe is probably the best clear coat wipe um which means they have Probably they could make a good formula for a clear coat spray. Check this one out right here. See that? Uh, yeah, I do fog lights. I do tail lights. You know, I do any kind of light on the vehicle that is necessarily uh, needed to be done. Uh, tail lights don't go bad as, uh, as as much if they're the regular red tail lights because uh, the red tail lights have a different um, light index, so they don't go bad as uh, quick as a clear one. But look at that. I do the, I think this is a Lexus. I do um, the uh, fog lights as well, fog light restoration. Um, that's my car back there. Um, but anyhow, uh, there's a lot of things that, you know, in time I will go over in these videos, but I want to keep hitting and touching bases on the uh, really negative points of what not to do. Uh, this can help the everyday person from hearing, you know, these weird things like, you know, spray this on your headlight or, uh, you know, uh, use this and do this, use that pad. Like, you know, I'm just cutting through all the bullshit. This is where it's at. This is what you do. Um, there's many other ways to do it, like I said, but, um, you know, there I, i've done so many different ways and you know i'm a kind of person when um you know when i say i done so many ways and i've tried this and i've tried that like literally i've tried some stuff dozens of times and it's like it's gotta work no it doesn't work and then i try this one and then i try that and i evolve and i have evolved into learning that this is where it's at um, you know, like, oh, I, you know, just think about it. Like, you know, how ignorant can somebody be like, I do this and I do that. And they couldn't show you three pictures of their work, you know, three different vehicles that they've worked on. Like you just know it all. Look at all this that I'm showing you guys, uh, check this out. 
Uh, this is another vehicle I've done. This is a Subaru Outback, I believe. This is another um, engine cleaning and detailing. Um, I'm going to start doing some before and after filming of other services that I do, but uh, a lot, most of them I just take pictures because the pictures is um, the correct format for those, such as scratch removals and things like that. But uh, I'm going to start doing more of those to include them in some of these videos like this. But check out this engine bay cleaning and detailing. Look at that, like brand new, brand new, super slick, super clean. Uh, yeah, this is pretty light right here too. Big old light. Um, but yeah, it's like um, people need to think of um, there is no permanent fix for a headlight. And that's another thing. If you ever hear somebody say it's a permanent fix, it's like they're just playing on wordplay and they're kind of lying to you. And if they're, they're either doing it on purpose or they just don't understand that nothing on a vehicle is permanent. You can't put an engine in there that's permanent. You can't put a bumper on there that's permanent. You can't put a paint job on there that's permanent. Even if you had a car in a garage for 30 years, that paint's going to be jacked up. I don't care how well you take care of it unless you're just out there cleaning it three days a week and you're, and you're waxing it every month, you know, and never letting it touch sun or never driving it. Maybe so, but nothing on a working car, a day-to-day -day working car is permanent, especially things more exposed uh, to two things, which is the environment and more exposed to wear and tear. Check this out. They're made of injection molded plastic. The machine melts plastic pellets into a gooey liquid, then shoots it into a mold for the specific part. When the lens comes out, they wipe it down with an anti-static cloth and inspect the surface meticulously. Next, a robot sprays the lens with a protective coating. This will prevent scratches, chips, or yellowing from exposure to ultraviolet rays. They run the lens through a tunnel oven to cure it. This component is the reflective just wanted to put that in there just a little information on how headlights are made but check out this light here um i did this light about uh close to three years ago you see what i'm talking about there uh this person just wanted it done again this was a um i think it was a uh, malibu or um chevy yeah chevy malibu and um check this out boom 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 but did you see how very little anything was going on? It was close to three years old. This person took very well care of their car, and that's how it's supposed to be. But this is what they were looking for, that new show car shine. So, I mean, if that's what you're looking for, you can go ahead and get it, um, you know. But, you know, two years, whatever. Her, hers is damn near three years. I think it was like two years, seven months, something like that. And, um, you know, she wanted it done again. So that's what I do. But as uh, far as, oh, my God, is your going to go bad right now? Like, no, it doesn't happen that way, especially if you take care of your vehicle. This is an Acura MDX. These lights are extremely hard to do. Uh, the substance and the length of them and the curves are extremely hard to do. This is a big old headlight. Uh, more than likely, it's a minivan. A lot of minivans uh, have huge headlights. Um, believe it or not, a lot of minivans and a lot of small vehicles have huge headlights. I don't know why it's like that. It just is what it is. Um, but yeah, look at this. Nice and clear. I work at about a 99%, um, you know, 99.9% um, perfection rating pretty much. And that's not to boost my shit up or nothing like that or you know be ego you know egocentric or nothing like that it's just actually the truth and i say that other that other little you know point you know zero one percent is uh just for the sake of um natural error like um uh you know a uh, vehicle that you know can't be done or those vehicles that have uh, stuff on the lights that won't remove or the the lights that have been never been done and it you know it's a 2003 and the lights are just toasted with cracks and stuff everywhere uh you know they, they can come better they could be you know done better but you know i like perfection you know i've um I've, at times i have even you know 
taken down you know i won't leave my customer with anything less or you know my friend or anybody else who i do have that restoration for with anything less than what i feel is perfection you know i've uh, at times even taken on you know you wait for the clear coat to dry and um you know taken you know it off again and started over from scratch started right over from scratch to working all my steps again and uh, that's once again if you make ever make any kind of mistake say drips or say um, you know something flies in it you know maybe a swarm of bees flies on or something who, who knows what's going on if you ever have to redo it again don't play with it I've learned this like trying to spot fix and do all these fancy little things like that like it's it's kind of it's cohesive and it's like a it's a whole unit it's a whole shell so when you try to do one piece it just doesn't come out right you gotta like do the whole headlight restoration over again you gotta do the whole light over again you know you gotta remove it and you gotta build it back up and you gotta seal it you gotta do it all over again it's no um damn that is a beautiful light that is yeah that was a nice one it was peeling off and you know, look at that. But you gotta, you gotta start over. You know, I got some questions like that before. Do you just do this and just do that? And I get some cu- some customers or people that say, hey, um, it's just not that bad. It's not that bad. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. It's not that bad. And I have to explain to them, I have to remove all that stuff over there, this and that, because if I just do, you know, every blue moon is rare. I would not do it because um, my skill level is real high. But here's the thing: if I just work on one little piece. You know, the chances are the pieces that I didn't work on will go bad before that piece and it would look funny and I have to explain it to them. It's one whole thing. You got to do it again. And sometimes even people need one headlight done and it's like, I'll tell you, I will do this one headlight, but I'd rather service them both, you know, because, uh, you know, once I do this one, it's going to look so good. It's going to make the other one look bad or when I do this one, they're not going to wear even. It's, you're always going to have one that goes bad than the other. You're going to be calling somebody out. You know, just think about it. I had the, you know, like some people were like, oh, I had an accident and I had this one replaced and I don't want that one done, but this one was replaced like a year ago. So now you have a headlight that's a year old and then one that's messed up. So you fix the messed up one and then like in a year or two, this other one's going to be messed up and then you might have to fix that one and then back and forth, back and forth. So it's just, it's a lot of variabilities in headlight restoration. There's, there's, um, there's not just one thing involved. There's not one thing involved in anything. There's not one way to do anything. And I commend anybody's uh, practice and how they do whatever. Um, but you know, you just got to be honest with yourself. If somebody showed me, uh, you know, a headlight, that was like, oh, look at this, look at this, boom, oh, look how clear this is, and it's 15 times more clear than mine, and it took one minute to do, okay, like, shit, I'm gonna have to listen, okay, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to chop it up, like, you know, you know, maybe this isn't the best method, and I'm gonna have to go try it out, and I'm gonna have to figure out what's going on, you know, um, you know, so I'm just saying, you gotta keep an open mind, and if you can't keep an open mind, and you can't, um, you know, just see what's right in front of you, um, you're gonna have a hard time at headlight restoration, because, I mean, it's, you know, it, it is what it is. You have to evolve to learn how to deal with these different lights. No light is the same. Every time you're doing something, it's different. Even if it's the same car, the same year, the same light, there's different situations and different wear and different um, levels of, um, you know, care to the vehicle. There's all kind of variabilities. It's never the same. So, I mean, you got to keep an open mind. And um, like with that being said, you got to keep an open mind to different people's practices. And that's how I evolved to this level. And that's how I evolved um, my methods of doing things is from experimentation and from hearing what other people do and from viewing what other people do and studying and researching. You know, I, I've, I've watched hours and hours of how headlights are made and research what a static wipe is and research what this and that is because th- uh, this is my passion. This is what I do. This is what I want to be. This is what I am. This is, um, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it shows through to the customer when they see you out there working when they see the end product of your work, they know that you are the man. Uh, they know that you are a pro. Uh, but anyways, here is another uh, engine bay cleaning and detailing. 
um yeah i do like i said i do a lot more than just headlights and engines but this is just what i have videos of at the moment um i'm gonna try to look into some more videos in the future and in my past i have a lot of hours of videos i have to go through just to find you know all this stuff these videos right here are pretty much me just, you know, showing, uh, you know, all the people that are interested in my videos, um, that I'm not a one trick pony, that I don't have just 20 lights I've done. Uh, when I say I've done so many lights, uh, I mean, I really mean it. I'm just, you know, just telling you what it is. Um, you know, it's, it's just, I have a success rate once again of like, you know, 99.9%. .9 and uh you know and that's just being modest you know that's just being modest i mean you know i i'm always you know i aim to please and um you know i'm a scientist at this i'm a you know i'm a artist at this i'm passionate at this and i'm a professional at this and um you know just look at the results of my methods and what i do the proof is in the pudding i mean between one and two how many amazing lights have you seen and not one light on here on one or two are the same not one are the same vehicle um i literally have um, on my computer i literally have um, um a note where i stopped on the videos and then i strictly just pick right back up from the stopped video that i have in order and go back up just go up until i stop at the next one and leave a next note for the next video but uh here goes another engine restoration or not engine restoration <laughs> engine um cleaning and engine bay detailing this is some kind of mazda uh, but look at that looks brand new and these tricks of the trades are you know it's amazing well, like if you're trying to see if you know if you're trying to be clean it's it's best to have a clean working vehicle when your engine bay gets too dirty or whatever like that um you know you could run you know into problems your alternators can burn out early you know from from that to your lines can dry and crack and uh you know blow lines easy you know so uh, there's a lot of things that happen from having a dirty dried out engine that you know is just filthy uh, and dirty a lot of things can happen but um to to know all these things and to do all these things it's it's um it's good like you learn how to do these things i mean like you pretty much you know like when people are selling vehicles and you have this dirty ass engine and you have these messed up headlights that you can't see at night on and these scratches and stuff like you know initially you know a person like myself is a gold mine to somebody who's selling a vehicle whether that's a dealership or uh you know an everyday joe i mean like you know a lot of people i get like they want to you know have uh, scratch removal and their headlights done and their engine bay clean and oxidation buffed out because when they sell the vehicle all these things are fixed which means they can sell it for more um you know because you know somebody if you're gonna buy a vehicle and have headlights like that i'm be like oh man i'm gonna have to replace those headlights or get headlight restoration uh look at the look at those scratches down there and look at look how dirty the engine is and i don't know it just doesn't look good you're gonna have a hard time selling it and you're gonna have a hard time trying to um sell it for a good price um i get a lot of people who want uh, stuff like this done even uh, dealership people I deal with I uh, can't sell a vehicle and you know and they know it's because of this and because of that and they want you to hook stuff up and then what do you know the next couple weeks it sells um, you know because nobody wants to buy a vehicle with all that stuff wrong with it and then you know you have to uh, you know clean stuff up all right uh back to business here look at these lights uh, not bad i believe this is a old pilot older model comes right back you wouldn't believe um i mean i guess you would you see some of these reels but some of the lights i've done before are so bad and then they come out looking so amazing looking better than the day they rolled off the lot looking you know beautiful you know going from performing at 10 percent to performing at 110 percent because with this ultra clarity with this ultra uh polished out you know um coated and service light it actually enhances 
the ability of the light and it almost it's almost like having leds put in or something you know it just you, you you're looking you know at your lights in the road and you're driving you're like damn you know it it enhances your lights capabilities because of this ultra clarity and once again i didn't just fall into this uh you know like oh i just you know i've done one headlight and i've tried one thing and this is how it is i've tried any product you can damn near think of uh you know on so many different kits and so many different speeds and so many different uh polishes from metal polish to regular polish to different plastic polishes um you know i've tried probably hundreds 200 different ways before i actually even touched a person's car look at that blue in that light that's nice before i even touched a person's car um you know i have a lot of guys a lot of detailers calling me and they're like are you know hitting me up through messenger or whatever and like hey i'm gonna do this and i want to do that and i'm like hold up hold up player you're uh you're working on somebody's vehicle um before you start working on somebody's vehicle don't you think you should go through some kind of formal uh, like formal training or something like you know a crash course or something you know watch a couple of videos or something like you, you can't just jump into somebody's you know and know what you're doing you know at least watch some videos uh try it out on some other cars you know i worked on my own cars at first and my friend's cars at first for free and then i went to uh we have a thing out here called pick and pool in california uh went went to pick and pool and uh place like that motor yards and and purchased lights and you know got online got got on ebay and got on whatever uh, a marketplace on facebook and stuff like that and got you know lights and obtain free lights and purchase lights like literally i had a whole whole shed full of lights that i went out there and i practice on day to day some days you know i you know i do you know three or four lights or i practice you know i break a light off in in three different areas four different areas and do four different things that are the same you know i once did um i once had like you know four different polishers the main plastic polishers out there from from mothers from mcguire's from 3m and i sectioned off you know a light you know four different ways and i polished them all the same and you know and went out with which one seemed to be better and i tried that and i you know i've done all these other things and i tried this and that and this knack and that knack and i i really be holding um scientific experiments with uh headlights um even still now i still go out there and try some new things with all the old headlights the beauty of it is whatever you do you can just um you know remove and start over once you have a couple headlights remove it all and start over um and you know re- you know try out different sandpapers i've tried you know dozens of different sandpapers and to come to conclusions that i've come to with sandpapers or anything else i've tried all these other sprays i've even had um you know i have working um lights out there uh, two pair of lights with different coatings that are broke down to maybe four or five different coatings sitting in the sun sitting in the weather not being cleaned and they've been out there for like two years and i go out there and wash them off and see um you know the dexterity of it how long are they lasting what are they looking like i really hold experiments i do this and this is how i've evolved into uh you know being so well uh knowledge about this and this is how my skill set is so high uh, you know if you could produce clarity like that you're good but you can't produce anything higher than that there's only one level what are you going to do be able to walk through it next i mean look at this you, you can only produce a certain level it's it's only a certain level you can't go any higher um, and this is just, you know, from my work method and, you know, like, uh, I'm, I'm like a headlightologist. I, I literally have tried so many different things and I have done so many different headlights and, you know, thousands of hours and, uh, you know, research, you know, I've researched what plastic is made out of, what this plastic is made out of and all these things I've, you know, I, I'm really dedicated to this and I would like to share that with you guys and, you know, pretty much close the gap for you guys so you don't have to go through all that. You know, obviously, you know, I show you guys on these videos, this is 
um, what I've done. These are what I have done, and this is how I've done it. I mean, I'm cutting through all that red tape, all that craziness, and if you trust me and try it this way, you'll see what I'm talking about. I guarantee it. Whether you be a detailer, whether you be another headlight restoration shop, whether you be whoever, uh, you'll you'll get it. You'll pick it up. Um, but, you know, like I said, um, you know, it can only be so good. And I've tried so many different ways. You know, I even once at one time I was even working on um, vehicles and I was using seven different pads and this and that. And, you know, you just live and you learn. And this is, um, you know, the evolution. What I show you guys, how I do it and what I do, this is the evolution of headlight restoration, evolution of my headlight restoration. And even some of my slogans say stuff like the future of headlight restoration because I believe it is, um, you know. There's all these other gimmicks and people trying to figure out how to do it. I mean, I'm figured out, you know, this is, uh, you know, like I said, there's, uh, you know, there's different ways to do stuff. But this is the way I feel. And the proofs of the pudding, like a lot of people don't see uh, what goes through my eyes and what has uh, gone through my mind and what I have done. Uh, So I'm getting it out there to the world. I'm getting it out there to you so you can see. Um, you know, it's no joke. I mean, look at all these, look at these lights. I mean, uh, don't miss a beat. You know, you can only do as good as what a light is, but I mean, just check it out. Like I don't miss a beat. This, uh, BMW right here. Um, I don't miss beats. You know, I, 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 I do what I say I do. It's a passion. I'm trying to be, uh, you know, the Le- LeBron James of the headlight restoration. Please like, and subscribe more to come. Thank you.